There are in life some binary questions which cause an awful lot of discussion. Tea or coffee? I think you know where I stand on that one. Paddles, should they be affixed to the back of the steering wheel and move or should they be static on the steering column? Sources, brown or red? It's actually, it's very easy that one. It's before midday, it's, it's always brown sauce. And then we have the Peugeot 205 GTI. 1.6 or 1.9? Well, now there might be a way out, a third option. Welcome to the Tolman edition. Ma mission terminée, je me sentais léger. J'allais tomber de haut. Why the debate with 205 GTIs? Well, you see, some people adore the reviness of the 1.6, but others lush over the extra oomph of the 1.9. The 1.9 also has a disc rear axle as opposed to the 1.6's drums and almost everyone prefers the 1.9's alloys. Not to mention the fact that the 1.9 lured people in with this advert. I mean, bonjour double zero set. Anyway, when Chris Tolman of Tolman Motorsport built his own personal Resto Mod 205, he took a 1.6, added the 1.9's alloy wheels and rear discs, but kept the Revy engine while giving it 10 brake horsepower more than a 1.9. Problem solved. But this isn't that car. This 700 hour build is a 1.9 that revs and takes things a whole lot further. The engine in this car is an absolute firecracker of an engine. 200 brake horsepower and boy does it like to rev. Revs to just over 7,000 RPM and it wants to be up there. This is a car that wants to be driven and driven hard. Whoa. What a mighty little engine to have. 200 brake horsepower, 895 kilos, that'll do. The four cylinder remains naturally aspirated and keeps the aluminium XU block, but it has a ported 16 valve head with new cams and a bespoke billet cam cover. Tolman's own stainless steel exhaust provides suitable acoustics, but like the whole car, retains a standard aesthetic with a turned down tailpipe. With a competition style clutch and compression and cams, as Chris puts it, it's always going to be an urgent and slightly feisty experience. But a new ECU and fly-by-wire throttle helps quell some of the aggressiveness and also improves cold and hot starting. The numerical end result is an uplift from an original 1.9's 128 bhp and 118 pounds foot to 200 brake horsepower and 160 pounds foot of torque, while the 0 to 62 time drops from 7.8 to 6.5 seconds. Welcome to British summertime. Sunny, muggy, one minute, and absolutely heaving down the next. It's amazing getting back in here. Just how small it feels. I know that's a, made to be a very obvious thing to say, but it is. I feel like the fact this has been trimmed in Alcantara though. It makes the world a difference straight away. But then you've got the standard seats, which I like, and I actually like having the scratchy plastics too. I absolutely adore these dials. They're just brilliant. Normally, a digital dash wouldn't necessarily be something I'd look forward to, particularly in an older car, particularly in one that's sort of really so outwardly and inwardly unchanged. But these are just brilliant. I love the fact that if you press the Peugeot Sport button down here, all the dials change to facsimiles of those you find in a 205 T16. <laughs> How great is that? That's just fun. Other things that this car hasn't got that Chris Tolman offers include air conditioning, which I would have actually quite liked today, <laughs> despite the rain at the moment. That's the British summer for you. And you could also get a screen with things like Apple CarPlay on it, which 
I'm sort of glad this isn't in here. I quite like the plow pump stereo. Chris Tolman, well, his background is really in rallying. He worked for Rally Art for many years, building engines for them, and then building engines for BTCC cars as well, touring cars. And now, for some time, he's been running his own motorsport engineering company. And I asked him, sort of, why the diversity within it? Because he's built all sorts of things. You can go into the workshop, and it's not just Peugeots in there at all. There are Lotuses, Fords, there's even some Porsches. And he said that when he set it up, what he wanted it to be really was the next Pro Drive, a place of engineering excellence. You know what else has myriad areas of interest, appeal, and excellence? Of course you do, because you watch all these films with a religious fervour, never skipping a second. It's a Haggerty Drivers Club subscription, with its magazine, discounts, access to the Haggerty online valuation tool, and roadside assistance all bundled up together, just like um, the five ratios in a GTI. The gear shift, they've improved it, but it is very much still a 205 gear shift. It brings well, its memories flooding back. It's not anything like as vague as, I remember, the 1.9 that I drove for a while, which is Miami Blue. But it still has a bit of that Frenchness to it. Obviously, with 200 brake horsepower, we need some proper brakes in this as well. And it's got them. You can see the AP calipers peeking out from behind those beautiful wheels. When Chris did his first one, his 1.6, he put some GTI 6 brakes on it. But this has got APs because he decided that if he wanted the repeatability, he didn't want to be hunting around on eBay for old GTI 6 brakes. Understandable. There are also ATEX CNC formed stainless steel brake lines to keep things fade free. And while that all helps on the way into corners, it's great providing the assistance on the way out with an ATB LSD or Automatic Torque Passing Limited Slip Differential. Traction out of the corners is excellent. And the whole car just has more precision. It's just nicely balanced. All the ergonomics are obviously the same, so you still sit up quite high, wheel in your lap if you're as tall as me. But the pedals are still beautifully placed for healing and towing. Gear shift, just that little bit of a stretch, but obviously because it's tighter, it's not, you're not reaching for it. And in those corners, out here, it's just that more precise. Your inputs are smaller. Down these bumpy B roads, Suspension does work really well. Still throttle adjustable. Talking of throttle adjustability, this is a hedge. And legend has it that legions of 205 GTIs ended up going backwards through such shrubbery in the surprised hands of owners after all they'd done was lift off the right hand pedal. The problems were threefold. Firstly, you had a very sharp throttle, so you came into a corner and lifted off. And instantly then the second problem came in, which was weight transfer, which in itself can be a good thing in a car, obviously. The problem was that the rear suspension was that much firmer than the front, and that really exacerbated the weight transfer. I remember it in my 205 rally car, my first rally car, 1.6, and over the bumps, and all that rear end always so busy. <laughs> this is much better. There's a new rear anti-roll bar and adjustable bottom arms, combined with a bespoke tune of the Bilstein dampers. All Tolman additions come with power steering too, but it's not heavy-handed in its assistance, and overall there's just a lovely tight feel to the car. You come into the corner like this and it's just that much more precise and planted, and it gives you more confidence. There are all sorts of other little mod cons in here. Because if you didn't stuff one backwards into a hedge, well, there was a high chance that it might get nicked. So this obviously has an immobiliser, an alarm and a tracker in it. Clearly, with so many options, there is a wide range of prices for a Tolman Edition GTI. Each car gets a freshly prepared bare metal shell, and then the choice is yours really, with prices starting at £55,000 plus donor car and rising to over £120,000 for a conversion like this. That's a lot of money for something that, unlike so many resto mods, remains almost identical in appearance to the Gerard Welter-designed original. But for me, that unmolested look 
triggers something I haven't really felt with a resto mod before. You know what they say about nostalgia? It's not what it used to be. And in some ways, it really isn't, because actually the derivation of nostalgia, so nostos, is Greek for uh, homecoming, and algos is, is pain, and it was very much seen as something bad, nostalgia. But that's not the case anymore. Nostalgia is more associated now with a warm, fuzzy feeling of things that made you happy, or you think made you happy, in the past. But most of the resto mods that I've driven well, the nostalgia bit doesn't really apply to me because they're from an earlier era, from generally the 60s. This, however, this, this speaks right to me. Nostalgia these days can definitely be a good thing. And this is living proof of it.